All right. What's up, Periscope? And what's up, Facebook? <clears throat> Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Amen and amen. I know it was hot today. It's still hot today. And everybody was out because folks are tired of being cooped up. I mean, folks was out like it was a regular summer day. Okay, because it was hot in Chicago. We're talking about 79 and whatnot. So, anyway, uh, so just want everybody to be careful and be safe out there because, you know, uh, we still have to be careful and be safe and be wise. But anyway, so let's jump right into our weekly prophetic word. Let's start with a word of prayer. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for Jesus. Thank you for his blood. Thank you for the righteousness that's found in him. God, I surrender. I ask you to speak to my mouth. Oh, God, breathe through me. Let your word be spoken and let your will be done so that <clears throat> everything that you want said might be said, that you might be glorified in all things. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen and amen. Now, the prophetic word for today is wealth of the sinner. Wealth of the sinner comes from a very familiar verse, but uh, hopefully the Holy Spirit is going to give us some nuggets and help us to glean some things we haven't heard before. Proverbs 13 and 22. Now, I'm going to read many translations because that's kind of key. It says a couple of different things in English based on the translation you're reading, and then we're going to look at the original language as well. Proverbs 13 and 22. Out of the Berean Study Bible, it says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is passed to the righteous. Is passed to the righteous. New International Version says, A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. English Standard Version, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. Okay? King James Bible, the one we're probably most familiar with, says a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. That's probably the one you're most familiar with. Okay? But there's some things that the Spirit of God wants to uh, bring out so we can get some new understanding, okay, so we can glean some new insight into what this verse is actually saying, okay? So when it starts off by saying a good man, pleasant, agreeable, or good, okay, we know that Jesus said none is good but God, but it's also talking about being righteous, and being right in the eyes of God. That is not a matter of moral perfection. That is not a matter of sinlessness because nobody is sinless but Jesus. It's a matter of faith and believing. Or as the scripture says, a righteous man, a good man falls seven times and gets up again. Okay, but the sinner falls into mischief. So in other words, what that verse means is that you're not trying to make mischief or sinful living or wicked living a lifestyle. That's the difference because many times it can be confusing when the Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and none of us are righteous in and of ourselves, but then uses the phraseology, a good man. Again, uh, the Bible says that a just man falls seven times and rises up again, but the sinner falls into mischief. So it's talking about you're not trying to make a wicked lifestyle your norm. That's also in the New Testament where the Bible lists all the things, and it says that if you go to practice these things, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, sexual immorality, greed, lasciviousness, covetousness, those kinds of things. So those that practice the English word there is due, but it means as a lifestyle. Okay? So when it's talking about a good man, I'm saying all that to help alleviate your guilt from your mistakes. Because no one except Christ himself is mistake-free. No one except Christ himself is sin-free. Okay, but it's talking about what is your lifestyle? It's not talking about falling. It's not talking about making a mistake. It's talking about how do you live? Remember that God said of King David, I have found a man after my own heart. And people never finish that quote. It amazes me. And they keep saying, well, David was a man after God's own heart. But they never finish the quote. I have found a man after my own heart. He shall fulfill all my will. That's actually 
what God said. And so in King David's life, when it was all said and done, we know that David had flesh problems. We know that David had flesh out of control. But David also did what God wanted him to do, meaning he wrote all that music. He organized uh, Bethlehem, the city of David. He organized Zion. He organized the children of Israel. He established the worship. He established the ushers and the mus musicians and the singers and the instrumentalists. And he made worship a regular part of Israel's uh, uh, daily life. Uh, the last great act of King David was to give a humongous offering towards the building of the temple because God told him he wasn't going to build a temple, but Solomon was going to build it. So King David gave a massive amount of money as an offering and resources for his son Solomon to build the temple. See, so David actually did with his life all the stuff that God wanted him to do, which is what God said. He did not say, I have found myself a perfect man or a sinless man. So I'm saying all that to tell you to be encouraged that when the Bible says on the one hand that none of us are good and we're all have sin, which is true, when the Bible calls us good, it's talking about your lifestyle. What's, what's your pursuit every day? Okay? Are you trying to make wickedness your standard every day? Then that ain't talking to you. Okay? But again, to alleviate your guilt if, from your mistakes, if you're pursuing God's heart and God's will and you are after that every day, then you qualify. Okay, when he's talking about a good man. He said, leaves an inheritance. That's pretty self-explanatory. The word there coming out of the Hebrew says, to inherit, to occupy, to bequeath, distribute, or in state. Very, very important. To inherit or to occupy, that means it could be land as well, property as well. To bequeath, distribute, in state. Pretty obvious there. To his children's children. In the Hebrew, that word actually, the phrase actually says, to his son's son. So it says to your grandson, but obviously it does mean children's children as well. Grandchildren, grandchildren, but it actually literally says son, son. But the sinner as well, uh, when it's talking about a sinner, to miss, to sin, to forfeit, lack, expiate, repent, lead astray, condemn. All those things have to do with practicing a sinful lifestyle. Not making a mistake or falling, but practicing a sinful lifestyle, constantly missing the will of God, constantly living in things that you know aren't right. To forfeit, to give up your faith, to give up your place with God, to give up the things that God has called you to. Uh, lack, expiate, repent, lead astray. Now that one's huge because God says one of the things that he hates is when we sow discord among brethren. So are you making it your business to lead people astray? That's what sinful people do. And to condemn, bringing condemnation. Because John 3.17 says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Romans 8 and 1, there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So what does that mean in a practical sense? Just what it says, that the Lord's purpose was not to come to condemn us. Okay? And that once you get into Christ, condemnation is over. Not consequences. You still get consequences. The condemnation is over once you step into Christ, okay? So when it's talking about a sinner, it's talking about people who make all of that a part of their lifestyle. Every time they show up, they bring in condemnation. Every time they're showing up, their purpose is to lead people astray, that kind of thing, okay? But the sinner's wealth, a force, an army, wealth, virtue, valor, and strength. Wow. So it doesn't just mean money. It means time and energy, manpower, resources. Okay, even virtue and valor. That means that even if they have somewhat good character, that's going to show up in your service. Because it says it's passed to the righteous, to hide, to hoard, reserve, to deny, to protect, to lurk, to the righteous. Okay, those of us that are just. So <clears throat> what uh, I wanted to pass on to you today is that this is supposed to be our business. This is supposed to be our goal. But here's the thing. The Spirit of God is saying that you have to expect this. This is coming for some people right now. What do I mean by that? I mean that some people, y'all been toiling and laboring and working and sowing and planting and watering for a very long time. And some of us have been completely shut down and have had to, and have had to readjust our strategy, readjust our thinking, readjust our approach because of the pandemic. But what the Spirit of God is saying to you now, and let me just throw this in while I'm talking about this. This is why it's so important to get a prophetic rhema word from God. 
This is why it's so important to hear and get in the prophetic flow. Hear what the Lord is saying now. Because if you are not regularly sitting at the feet of Jesus to hear what he's saying prophetically, that's why it's so easy to miss. Remember last time or last Thursday I talked about the parable of the ten virgins and that wise Christians are the ones that keep their lamps filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit so that when the Lord is ready to move, they can go in with whatever the Lord is calling them to. And those that aren't wise as Christians are not filled with the Holy Ghost. And so when the Lord moves, they're off somewhere trying to purchase some Holy Ghost and, you know, not using what God already gave them. So that's why it's so important to get a live rhema prophetic word from the Lord on a regular basis. And that's why I come on every week so the Spirit of God can speak through me so we can hear what the Lord is saying. And that's why you've heard me say over and over again, the apostolic and the prophetic needs to be a regular part of every Christian's life, not just prophetic churches, not just Pentecostals, not just any denomination. God called for an end to denominationalism in 2014. So we're not even still supposed to be walking in, denomin in denominationalism, if you didn't know that. God called for an end to that six years ago. But rather, so that every gift in the body of Christ can be pulled into place. And that includes the apostolic and the prophetic. And that's why it's got to be a regular part of your life. So you've heard me say before, God said five, and we say three. If you just take evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and you don't take apostles and prophets, you are going to miss the full and the perfect will of God. So what the Spirit of God wants me to say along that score about the wealth, the valor, the strength, the treasure of the sinners being laid up for the righteous people is that it's about to happen for some of us. It's about to be a transfer. Okay? Now, Huh. Some of you looking at me have been burned by people that you've heard say that before. And some of you want to know, and rightfully so, just exactly what does that mean? What does that mean and what does it look like? I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> it's going to be different for different people because nothing ever looks the same for everybody. But it means that God is going to take his mighty hand and in some cases give you favor and have doors open for you by people that are the gatekeepers that may not even be believers. Sometimes it will be money. Sometimes it will be contracts so you can work for people. Sometimes it will be opportunities to produce or do what you do. Whatever it is that you do, God's going to touch the heart of some, some unbelievers and cause them to open doors for you that you couldn't open by yourself. So it's not just people walking up to you and giving you cash and not, not just people blessing you, because sometimes that does happen. And I know that people that don't believe in the prophetic and are always talking about prosperity gospel and it's all a scam and blah, 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 blah. Sometimes God does, people, does touch people's hearts and they just give to you. They just sow into you sometimes. But sometimes what God gives you is opportunity. Sometimes what God gives you is open doors. And the Holy Spirit is saying, this is about to happen for some of the believers. So the way you get yourself in that flow and in that mix is number one, be sure you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Be sure that every day you're sitting at the feet of the Lord and you ask him to fill you with the Holy Ghost, number one. Number two, be sure that you develop a listening ear because the Spirit of God generally is not loud. You have to know him to know that. That's what I'm talking about. Remember the Lord says that, you know, worldly people, sinners don't have the Holy Ghost. So they don't know him and they can't see him, but we do. Okay, so you should know if you've been walking with God long enough that the Holy Ghost generally is not loud. He's very gentle. Sometimes he's so gentle until you miss him if you didn't know that was him touching your heart. Also, you need to know that God is love. When the Lord shows up, he's going to show up with love, with a loving attitude and not a critical spirit. Okay? And that's how you walk in the perfect will of God every day. You have an ear for the Holy Ghost. Remember, the scripture says, the Lord says seven times, he that hath an ear... Let him hear, him or her, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Why would the Lord say, he that hath an ear, if you didn't have to have an ear? How come the, the Lord didn't say, all y'all believers? How come the Lord didn't say, you Christians, my body? That ain't what he said. He's talking to the body, talking to the Christians, and said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So what that means in practical terms is that you have to 
position yourself to get in the blessing and the flow of this, I won't call it a wealth transfer, but, but uh, I'll call it uh, as the Lord begins to touch the hearts and as these opportunities and these doors begin to open so you can recognize them. Sometimes, like I tell you, like the Lord dropped something in my spirit that I've been working on feverishly, a new thing I'm producing. I'm so excited about it because new ideas are flowing about this thing every day. And I have to stop during my day and write them down because everybody that's creative knows that if you don't write your, your ideas down, you'll end up losing them. And he just dropped it in my spirit and things are just flowing and I'm just writing it down. I'm so excited. I can't make you understand. I was up at like two o'clock this morning uh, writing some music. So, I, you know, uh, so once again, I'm just telling you that I'm living what I'm saying. But the only way to do that is you have to be in that flow. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. You can't be, to, to, to make it even plainer, if I haven't been plain enough yet, you can't be one of those Christians that just talks to God on Sunday and then you don't talk to him anymore until next Sunday. If, you're, uh, if that is your walk with God, you're going to end up being like the foolish virgins where you are going to be off somewhere where you shouldn't be because you don't ask God every day, where should I be? What should I be doing? God, please use my life in the way you want to use it. Do you understand? That's how you get in that flow. And remember, I, last week I talked about how you don't know that to don't wait just for the big boom. Don't just wait for the big opportunity. Don't just wait for the big break because God can give you little opportunities every day and God can give you opportunities uh, just like that, just things you weren't looking for. Now, as soon as I said that, something happened that Monday, last Monday, and I got an opportunity and uh, it was it was awesome. And uh, I was very happy with the result because a door opened and because I was in the right mindset, I recognized an opportunity when I saw it and the Lord blessed me. Do you see what I mean? So that's what I mean when I say that. See, that's a daily walk with God. You have to train your spiritual ear. Just like when you are a baby, a physical baby, your child learns their primary language because that's what you speak in the house. Whatever it is that you speak in the house, that's what your child learns because they have to hear you talk. Okay? Well, there's no different in the spirit. You have to hear the Lord talk and you have to get used to him talking and that's how you begin to tune your spiritual ear to his voice. So the spirit of God is saying those financial, those wealth blessing opportunities from unbelievers are coming and i guarantee you i hate to have to say it but i guarantee you some christians are going to miss them and the reason that they're going to miss them is because they don't walk with god every day and they don't have an ear to hear what the lord is saying they don't know his still small voice they don't know the voice of the good shepherd that gives his life for the sheep because they don't talk to him every day they don't spend time with him every day but those of us that do, those that do know the Lord and do know his voice and do know his gentle touch, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because God is about to put favor in hearts. God is about to open some doors. God is about to give some opportunities. Some people will sow directly in your life. Uh, and uh, some, sometimes it's connections. Sometimes the person you meet, they know somebody that knows somebody. Sometimes I know a guy that knows a guy. Sometimes that's your blessing. But it's going to be by the hands of the Lord. Now, let me give you some more practical tips. One of the biggest blessings I ever got was because the Holy Spirit interrupted me and told me to get up and go to the store. And I was busy doing something else. And the Holy Spirit just kept hitting my heart. He said, get up, get up now, get up now. And I said, okay, Holy Ghost. So I got up and I went to Office Max. I had been in the market for some stickers that I was going to use for a, a, a game I produced. Those stickers were normally priced at $42 a pack. The Holy Ghost interrupted my work day and told me to get up and go to Office Max. I went to Office Max. Not only did I find the stickers on sale at half off, but it was buy two, get one free. <laughs> so I spent $42 total and got three packs of stickers. You understand that? That's because I had an ear to hear what the Holy Ghost was saying, and I moved when he told me to move, and I did what he told me to do. That's what I mean. That's a practical example of what I mean about how when you, you have an ear to hear what the Lord is saying every day, about when you spend time with him every day, about when you train your spiritual ear to know his voice every day. 
And if you don't do that, you're going to miss. I don't know any other way to say it. Okay? So for those of you that are trained and ready, filled with the Holy Ghost, at Jesus' feet every day, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, and don't miss the opportunity. Okay? And the Holy Ghost is also telling me that when it happens, be sure to give him the glory. Acknowledge him. Honor him. Praise him. Thank him. And be sure to give him the glory. When you give your testimony, be sure to tell people that it was not by your own wisdom and not by your own effort and not by your own hand that you got that blessing, but it was the hand and the grace, the wisdom, the leading and the spirit of God that blessed you. Okay? So I'm excited. I'm receiving it. And for all of those of you that receive it, say amen and we'll be ready. Might be some opportunities happen before this day is out. You never know. Okay? And you can't limit God. All right? Amen and amen. All right, now when you see me close my eyes, I'm asking the Holy Spirit, is there anything else he wants me to say? So I'm going to do that now. I'm praying in tongues. For those of you that don't have a prayer language, it's 1 Corinthians 14. I will pray in the Spirit, and I'll pray with understanding also. When you pray in tongues, when you pray in your prayer language, that's praying in the Spirit, okay? That's a deeper connection between your Spirit and the Holy Ghost. And remember, the Holy Ghost is connected to Jesus. And that's how you begin to download through the Spirit the will of the Lord. Okay? Okay. All right. What the Lord gave me was an image and a sound. Uh, sometimes prophetically, you don't always get words. Sometimes you get images. Sometimes you get sound, sometimes you get smell, sometimes you get colors, sometimes you get locations. There's, there's a lot of ways that you can prophesy. What the Lord just gave me was a sound of a ringing bell, but it was like one sound. It wasn't like a church bell where it continually rings. It was more like a, a, a big clang, and then I saw a ringing bell. Now, normally in the spirit, a ringing bell can mean an announcement it's kind of like a sounding trumpet sometimes a ringing bell means pay attention to this uh, and sometimes a ringing bell means like in school it means that something is over so what that means is that in my life or your life or those of you that are listening those of you that are receiving this prophetic word a bell's going to ring it's going to signify where god is saying boom pay attention to this well, God is saying, boom, this is over. Okay? That's what that means. So I'm ready to receive that. If there's something in my life that God says is over, I'm, I'm down. And if there's something in my life that God wants to call my attention to, I'm down. <laughs> I'm ready to go either way. Okay? All right. Amen. And God bless you. That's our, prof our live prophetic word for today. Remember that my prophetic devotional for quarter two is available. Uh, it's on my website, prophetdavidtaylor.org. Every day a prophetic scripture to help you build your personal prophetic walk with God. And I got a lot more books and a lot more music coming out. And I can't wait to share it with you. All right. So uh, remember the links for this broadcast will also be on my Facebook Live um, page, uh, which is facebook.com, Prophet David Taylor. But also uh, it's on my Periscope. I'll put the link on there and it's on YouTube. All right. Amen, and God bless. Thanks to those of you that watch me live. God bless you to those of you that listen to the podcast or watching the replay. And I will see you, man, May is over. I will see you next week, next Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for the next weekly live prophetic word. Amen, and God bless.